is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Oh. <laughs> ah, shalom, World Harvest Television, WHT, uh, and the Lassie Broadcasting Network. And I want to thank you for partnering with us on this special live program. And I want to remind you, submit your prayer requests and praise reports for healings and miracles. And uh, Keith and I, at a certain point in the show, are going to pray over these. Yes. And uh, you can keep in touch with us through Facebook and the Twitter pages uh, using the hashtag Sid Roth Live. Well, Keith, what are we going to expect for this show? What is God showing you? Well, Sid, you know, as you know, I'm a dreamer, and I have many dreams every night. I've been doing that, you know, most of my whole life since I was five years old. It began, and I'm still dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. I'm a dreamer just like Joseph was in the Bible and Daniel. And I see these incredible dreams. And what I saw was there's going to be an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit here on this particular show. God is going to do all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. Many people are going to get a breakthrough because of this program. People are going to begin to uh, be uh, e elevated in their gifts of the Spirit. Things are going to begin to happen. They're going to begin to sleep better, feel better, get up with joy. There's going to be revival in their heart and in their house. It's going to be incredible what God's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. All right. Yeah, Keith, Keith is a seer. Uh, by the word, you can figure out what it means. He sees things. I kind of feel things, and it's really a, an interesting combination. I describe what I'm feeling, and he tells me what's going <laughs> on. Uh, but, uh, but Keith, uh, you have seen some amazing things, and uh, I'd like people to kind of understand uh, this gifting you have. It's a very unique gifting. Uh, it really, uh, it started many years ago, but you had an encounter with Jesus when your son uh, he was brain dead. What was yeah. wrong with your son? Uh, my son, Justin, uh, contacted uh, bacterial spinal meningitis when he was at school. He was six years old. And while he was at school, he just breathed it in, didn't know it. They thought he got it at school or maybe, you know, walking up the sidewalk or maybe I, even the, maybe even the day before. They weren't exactly sure to pinpoint that. But it was so bad that several people had already died from the disease. And then all of a sudden, he rolls out of the bed in a coma, and we end up in three hospitals in one night. And the diagnosis was horrible that he had bacterial spinal meningitis. He had absolutely no brain activity whatsoever. Brain dead. Brain dead, yeah. And so after many days... But that, what, what, what did the doctor say uh, would happen to him? Well, they said that, you know, if he were to survive, his heart kept beating and he kept breathing. Did they think he'd survive? Well, no, they didn't. They weren't sure because they, it was such a bad case. They've done everything they could do. And that we thank the Lord for good doctors. They kept him alive. But what I want to thank God for is that they said, and they believe this, that if he did not have any change, that he would be like a vegetable. In other words, he's brain dead. He'll either pass on the way or he'll be like a vegetable. But I had an encounter with Jesus that when, changed my life. When you had this encounter, did you see him? Did you hear him? Did you feel him? Well, well, Sid, I'll tell you what happened. When I, that night when I left the hospital, because of the, the huge, huge outpouring of people that came, the huge response from the doctors, they brought in team after team after team because this was contagious and it was very deadly. And so he was isolated. And then after all the reports came in, things were so bad. And so it upset me so much that I asked my wife, could I go home? And I went home that night. 
Now, here's the problem with me. I had got out of church. I wasn't right with God. I wasn't where I should be. It got my feelings hurt, got out of church, and, you know, I, I felt like I didn't even have the right to pray. But when, as I was going home, I was repenting that night because I didn't know what else to do. I was crying, help, Lord, help. I mean, this is it. You've got to do something. You've got to help us here. And so when I went into the house, taking off my jacket and everything to get ready to take a shower, I sat on the bed, and I said, Lord, will you forgive me? The moment I said, Lord, will you forgive me, the, the room lit up like a football stadium. I'd never seen anything like it in my life, even though I'd had visions at five and growing mm -hmm. up. I'd never had this kind. This is, this is a, you know, this was just unbelievable light. And there stood Jesus. And Jesus said to me three profound words that knocked me backwards. And, you know, I see sometimes when I say words, people go back in the spirit, you know. And what happened was when he said, I thought, you know, I thought if Jesus ever, you know, came and talked to me, we'd just sit down and have a conversation. But that wasn't what it was. He was saying something that would change my life forever. He said, go to church. Okay. So what Keith did, he got in his car and he drove to the first church. He went inside and then he heard another message from Jesus. What was it? You know, it said I got in that church, I was just, it was a miracle I got in it. The guy that was there was stuck there and he couldn't leave the pastor. And I, he, I asked him, could I go? And he said, yeah. I ran down to the altar, fell on the, my knees. I got down on my knees. Mm -hmm. Kneel before God, your maker. I got on my knees. I said, Lord, you appeared to me. I, I was shaking like this. I mean, just shaking. I, I was excited like I am now. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I knew by that presence, something good was about to happen. And so I, I was repenting and I said, Lord, Lord, just forgive me. Take me. Use me. And he said, that's all I've ever wanted you to say in your whole life hmm. is use me. And so I said, Lord, use me. And he said, get up, go back and prophesy to everybody that your son has just got a miracle. Now, he, he decides to prophesy to the doctors. Uh, they, they think they should give him a drug to calm him <laughs> down. But guess what? A miracle happened. His son recovered. And since that point, I have to say you're one of the most grateful thankful believers in the Messiah I have ever met. You spend all your time, it appears to me, praying and thanking God. I, and, and as far as I'm concerned, that encounter you had with the Lord and your life of gratefulness has produced major, major miracles and words and dreams and vision. For instance, this may be hard for you to believe, but I believe it. He had a woman in his congregation that needed knee surgery. I think it was the next day. Tell me about her. Yeah, there was a lady that came into one of our meetings, and she had a. She said, I've got to have surgery on my knee. And I'm standing right there in front of her, and I said, well, I feel like God's going to give you a new knee. I, don't, I believe you're going to have a total knee replacement. And all of a sudden, her knee went pop, 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 and guess what? She said, there's no pain. I said, run. She ran. She ran around and around. She's screaming, thank you, Jesus. The pain's gone. The swelling's gone. Everything went away that was causing the problem. And suddenly, she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had gave her a total knee replacement. And she was headed back to the doctor last time I saw her to praise God. And you know what? I had one happen before that where a lady got two brand new knees, went back to the doctor. And you know what? They said, you have two new knees. God had did a creative miracle just like he did for my son when he was brain dead, no hope, and the next day he sat up totally healed, didn't have to go to therapy, didn't have to have any rehab, and all that's good, but the doctors even grabbed him and kissed him and said, we've never seen anything like but this. How is this? <laughs> uh, uh, but but this, this, this begs a question. How is your son today? Is he a little slow in his thinking, having been brain dead? No, no, no. In fact, it, it's right the opposite. When he got up, it was such a great miracle. They brought in so many specialists from all over the country. They, they couldn't, they just couldn't believe what had happened. But, you know, the reports changed so drastically. And by the way, somebody's report is going to get better. I see it right now in the spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, that there's going to be some good news next time you go to the doctor in Jesus' name. Now, Keith told me about a dream he had recently involving women. Tell me about that dream. 
Well, Sid, you know, I, I, I dream all the time, and, and, I, and the reason I pray all the time is, you know, what I was just saying a minute ago, when, when Justin got up, he, he, you know, he was totally normal. And it had the, they t- checked his IQ. It was that of a genius. And today it's the <laughs> same way. I mean, God did such a great miracle. So now I pray all the time, all that I can, and then I dream. I had a dream about a woman. It was the strangest dream the other night. It's for me and you went to the other place that we went on television. And I had this dream, and I, 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 all during the night I saw a comic book. And in the comic book, the cover of it was a superhero, and the superhero was a woman. And and I remember my children reading this. The boys read it when they were little. It was Wonder called, Woman. Yeah, there yeah. it is. <laughs> it was Wonder Woman. And I, I dreamed. I, you, you you remember Wonder Woman? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I dreamed this all night long. The same thing about Wonder Woman, and all night long. And I thought when I was I hadn't came out of the dream yet, but I said, Lord, what is this? Why am I dreaming about a comic book character, a superhero? Mm-hmm. That done a lot of good. He said, because I'm about to do a wonder among women of the world. The women of the world are about to be blessed. Uh, Many of you, I'm talking to women right now, have had prophetic words. And many years have gone by and nothing has happened. You told me what type of ministries are about ready to pop up yeah. in women. Yeah. You know, I, I said to the Lord, I said, you're going to do a wonder among women. He said, they're even going to wonder. It's going to be such a quick thing that starts happening. They're, go- they're going to have all kinds of breakthroughs and healings and miracles among the women. He said, you know what it's, what's going to happen? He said, I'm going to put the Catherine Kuhlman anointing on the women. Okay. Some of you have actually had that prophesied to you. Now's your <laughs> chance. Now's your opportunity. But it's not just that. It's, I I guess, historically, women have been beaten down over the centuries. This is payback. (laughs) This is your moment, Wonder Woman. (laughs) Okay, God told you many years ago, and I've observed this about you, not to talk negative. What exactly did he tell you? Yeah, uh, many years ago in the 90s, you know, I was just like everybody. I was just talking, and mm-hmm. I was saying, this is happening, that's happening bad, this is happening, just like everybody else was. Right. And one day, I was doing a three-day fast. I was laying in the floor in my office doing a three-day fast to pray for the sick. And as I was praying, the Lord said, I'm going to change your ministry. You're going to be an encourager, an edifier, a lifter up, or a lift up my people in the last days, which we're in the last days. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. We just know we're in the last days. And he said, what you're going to have to do to call, be able to lift people is you're going to have to quit talking negative. I said, but uh, you know, how do I talk? And he said, you know, he said, just, and he gave me the title of a book that I've, I've just written. He said, start telling people something good. Find something good about people. Find something good about the world. Start talking good. What you speak creates. And I begin to I begin to speak good things, and I begin to watch my words. And you know, because I have that Samuel anointing, that gift, the seer, the, my words don't fall to the ground, Sid. And I begin to be able to speak things into people's life. It's, it's been incredible. Well, what, what would happen if God did that with your words? Do you know some people would be dead? If you're, you're, if you're watch, doing what everyone seems to be doing these days, looking at the political commentators and then like a little parrot parroting back what they're saying, do you know what? That's their job. That's not your job. Your job is to speak good news. Yes, yes, yeah. And the, yes. Truth, the truth of the matter is any fool can talk bad news. But it takes a man and a woman of God to speak good news. As you think in your heart, so are you. Why would you want to be speaking from the second heaven, the chatter of the demonic, when you can be speaking from the third heaven, the chatter of God? What do you want to have? Wow. Wow. Uh, Well... Keith told me he had a favorite song. And he told me about the person that wrote the song and did it. Well, guess who we have as a special music guest today? Jim Sonero. He it was, for 22 years, he was the worship leader for Benny Hinn. Do you know? Wow. And 
I said, Jim, what song do you want to play? And he says, first word out of his mouth was the song that Keith tells me every time it's played, miracles yeah. happen. Yeah. I'm going to walk over to the <laughs> set with Jim, and I want to talk to him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural.